Okay, I, was, I love Romans 8. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. It's, it's a whole lot about intercession in here. I got, I got this thing, I got this memorized word for word in the King James that I, that I love it so much. I memorized it. Uh, but look what this thing says. Uh, that was 20, verse 21 to verse 24. Verse 24 said, "For we are saved by hope." <laughs> I love this thing. <laughs> I thought we were saved by grace. We are saved by grace through faith. Faith, isn't that what uh, Ephesians 2 says? But it says here in Roman, Romans 8, it says we are saved by hope. Well, if you look, that's why it's so important to keep Scripture in context. Uh, don't be taking verses here and there. Uh, read the whole chapter. Better yet, read the whole Bible. Know the whole Bible. And then the Holy Ghost can help you out. Uh, but anyway, the verse prior, 2.24, for we are saved by hope. That 24.23 says, well, let me just read the whole verse again here. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even I, we, we ourselves grow in ourselves. This is the intercession part of it. Uh, this is waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. See, the body got to get saved. <laughs> That's why, why it says we are saved by hope. But guess what? Everybody I know, including Jesus, is, is dying and going to the grave. Unless you're here when... when uh, uh, the second coming does occur, according to what Paul said. We were alive and remain, but but guess what? The majority of us are going to be in the grave waiting by the time that time gets here. Uh, it's been two thousand years of people going into the grave, and each and every one of them, and including the ones that are alive and remain, are going to get a new body. It said, waiting for the redemption to wit of our body. So that's, that's uh, uh, the body has to be saved. What do we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23? It says, they sanctify you holy, spirit, soul, and body. Okay. And clearly in Romans 8, we are saved by hope. What salvation we're talking about? Body salvation. It, it's an unrefutable the fact, if you read the read the Bible, that you're going to get a new body. We shall be we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. <laughs> I don't know about you. I believe that scripture to be true, uh, especially the older you get. <laughs> I do thank God. I'm I'm 55 years old right now, and don't take any medicine, no heart medicine, no diabetes medicine. I believe in eating right. I believe. I believe in uh, uh, eating right, exercising, and staying healthy, and being a good steward of this body I got now. But I tell you what, when I get out of bed, a lot of times <laughs> I have aches and things, stiffness, not so much uh, pain, but just stiffness. The older you get, uh, I, my theory is just keep moving uh, and work it out. <laughs> just like, like you said, work out your, 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 your uh, salvation. With fear and trembling, well, your body salvation is going to be worked out every morning. You work that one out. No, anyway, anyway, uh, I'll be glad for a new body because I can't do the things I used to do. Uh, I try, I try, you know, I love, I love to run on the treadmill and, and stay in shape as best as I can. I love to ride a bicycle, uh, physical activity. God designed us, He didn't design us to sit sit and watch TV. Uh, I know I'm stepping on some toes now. <laughs> but nonetheless, get back to this salvation issue. Uh, there is a, there's definitely, scripturally, uh, uh, a body salvation. Well, this, this thing here, we are saved by hope and, and the understanding of the body salvation also gives you the understanding of spirit and soul salvation and 
uh, scripture uh, is amazing. The more, the more you study, the more you study, the more specific and distinct you find scripture to be. And I'm, a, I'm going to say this up front because I know it to be true from studying the Word of God that the gospel, now, see, the, the New Testament deals with all three salvations, spirit, soul, and body salvation. But the primary subject that is dealt with in the New Testament and the Gospels is soul salvation. And like we, like we already examined, uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, that there is a, a, a close relationship between spirit and soul, but yet, it is very important that they are they are separate, and it's very important uh, for the understanding. Let me go to uh, Ephesians two verses eight and nine. For we are saved by grace, through faith, and, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Now, this verse, uh, for we are saved, saved by grace, through faith, probably one of the most quoted verses in modern day Christianity, for we are but are for we are saved by grace through faith. Well, we've seen in Romans eight, you saved by hope. So is it grace by grace through faith, by faith through faith? Is it a great is it grace by faith, or is it? Or is it uh, by hope? Well, getting back to different salvations, let's pinpoint what this verse is referring to. We know it's not uh, dealing with body salvation. I'm not sure that Paul deals with the second coming in Ephesians. I can't remember any verse that... Uh, implies that in the book of Ephesians but with Romans 8 being so distinct on that is definitely about body salvation we need to narrow it down between spirit and soul salvation and uh, Paul um deals with a whole lot of spiritual things one of the th one of the keys that will let let you know that is the use of the word mystery repeated many times talking about the heavens uh, and being filled with the spirit Um, you got to associate the words that are being being used, but the the, the clincher on this of uh, what what salvation that Paul is talking about is because he isn't talking about the second coming. He can't be talking about body salvation, and the way I know he's not talking about soul salvation. In this, in these verses, because he never uses the word soul ever in the book of Ephesians. So this cannot be about this cannot be about 
soul salvation. And as we've seen already, there is a difference between spirit and soul. And so, here, here we come to a, a huge uh, misconception or a point of misconception that associating soul salvation scripture with this verse, this is a big mistake, <laughs> because he is not, uh, I repeat, Paul is not talking about soul salvation. He does not talk about soul salvation in the book of Ephesians, and he's not referring to it. He can't be, because it's never mentioned. He, he, in, in verse 8, we are saved by grace through faith. Okay. From there, we need to move on to soul salvation. Amen. Okay, at this point, we want to deal with this uh, word soul, which the Greek word is suke, which is the only, only Greek word for the word soul. And for best understanding, we're going to uh, define that as the mind, will, and the emotions. Amen. Now this is where this really gets exciting, for me, anyway. Uh, because Scripture is so specific on soul salvation based on mind, will, and emotions. And, for example, let's go to Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. 